Hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Michelle, and I'm an artist and maker working out of my South Philadelphia home studio. And once again, I wanted to switch gears a little bit. Um, since I recently got this new sewing machine, I've been able to play around a little bit and do some pants altering. I made a top, fixed some pillows around my house, but I want to push it a little bit further. For some reason, I've gotten it into my head that I can embroider on this machine. And I have seen a few YouTube videos and TikToks confirming my suspicions. So I'm going to give it a try myself. I do want you to take everything with a grain of salt because I am not a professional when it comes to sewing or embroidering. So keep in mind that this is not a tutorial. This is just me trying a new thing and you know i'm going to show you what i do along the way i'll try to give you tips and tricks that i learn along the way slash have learned from youtube videos that i've watched but if you want like an in-depth tutorial i would definitely head somewhere else maybe because this is just going to be more creative and fun you know what i mean um but without further ado let's let's see what i did here so to begin doing free motion embroidery on a machine, you need to get a darning foot, some stabilizer, some fabric, an embroidery hoop, some embroidery thread, and of course you're going to need your sewing machine. I was following a pretty lengthy tutorial on YouTube on how to do this, which I will link below if you want to follow along. but. Here I start by unrolling my tool and trying to position my embroidery hoop. This stuff is called Sulky and it is a peel and stick stabilizer which actually dissolves and rinses away once you soak your fabric in water later. So that's really nice and easy. I've never used it before but it kind of reminds me of like athletic tape, you know, that you put on your body when you're supporting your muscles if they're sore. So that kind of makes sense, um, but I put it in my hoop, try to make it as taut as possible. Next up, you need to prepare your machine for embroidering. And first up, you need to make sure that your feed dogs are either removed or lowered. I thought I was going to have to remove them, but I found this little lever in the back of my machine. Just check your owner's manual. You probably have a similar thing. And then with just a few clicks and unscrewing, I was able to take off this standard foot here and while I was at it I also removed my standard sewing needle because they call for a sharper um, thinner needle I guess for embroidery so I got a size 14 and then it was time to install my darning foot also known as a quilting foot you just want to make sure that that little part is on the left side and Took a little finagling, but I was able to install it pretty easily. And then, of course, time to thread up my machine, which it's so funny. I definitely haven't done this very much since, I guess, middle school when I first learned how to do it. But it's definitely like riding a bike. It's something that you don't really ever forget, you know, threading up a sewing machine. Definitely has some muscle memory involved regardless of what kind of machine you're using. As you can see here, to start this stitch, which is a little bit different than sewing regularly, they actually tell you to bring your bobbin thread up to the top of your fabric so that it's not kind of loose and underneath because obviously when you're embroidering, you're gonna be doing a lot of back and forth motion, going over the same spots that you've already sewn over. So. To keep your machine from jamming, you definitely want to keep all the threads on the top if you can. And here I'm just kind of experimenting and getting the feel of it. Um, it was definitely an interesting feeling having to move the fabric myself instead of just letting it go, you know, on a regular sewing machine. Um, but yeah, just kind of playing around with getting different angles and trying to build up the lines a little bit. And then you may or may not see here, but I'm kind of trying to go for some plant themes, of course, trying to do some leaves and build up some color. 
here it is after i did a bunch of testing on it definitely very very messy and i gotta play around with some of the stitch lengths and the tension but i don't know i guess for my very 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 first attempt this is okay and then once i felt comfortable with that i switched over to my other fabric that i got from jomar which you may have seen we took a trip earlier in this episode um which that was the first time i've ever been there and it is seriously like a fabric mecca so if you live in philadelphia or around the area i definitely think it's worth the trip if you are looking for some dead stock fabrics discount fabrics um little off cuts zippers things like that it was really fun looking around and seeing and touching all of the different textiles And of course, embroidery takes a lot of thread, so there was definitely a lot of rewinding my bobbin. And yeah, I feel like here I was really starting to get the flow of it and kind of understood more what my hand should be doing to direct the needle where I wanted it to go. Um, this was funny. My arms got really tired and actually kind of sore from doing this, from having to like manually move the fabric all the time. It kind of reminded me of trying to drive a car without power steering, if you've ever <laughs> had to do that. It's it's definitely a task. Here is the semi-finished product. I'm definitely liking the pops of color and the way I played around with the different plants and wildflower kind of ideas. And here you can see I'm taking the fabric off of the loop, putting it to a different section so I can do one more and this might be a good time to remind you that i am on instagram and tiktok almost every day if you wanted to see more behind the scenes content at kata underscore handmade i also have a patreon shop if you wanted to support a little bit further my second tier patrons get access to inventory that is no longer offered to the general public and of course if you wanted to shop online you can always shop at katahandmade.com or in person you can check my stockist page i definitely think doing little flowers like this was kind of my favorite just doing like a zigzag back and forth and making sort of like a lavender-esque kind of plant um, but I definitely don't think the fabric liked it very much, and you'll see why in the future. And once I decided I was done embroidering, I carefully tried to remove any excess stabilizer off of the fabric and carefully cut it off very nervous about cutting the fabric here and then I just soaked it in some lukewarm water and literally within minutes it just dissolved like this so pretty cool all right everyone and this is what it looks like now that I've gotten the stabilizer off of it and it has dried and it looks pretty good if I do say so myself, um, this is it doubled up, but here's the single layer of it. And I don't know, I think for my first attempt that I did pretty well. <laughs> um, I definitely think that I was struggling the most with this fabric choice because since I wanted it to be sheer, obviously, the weaving has to be a certain way to let that kind of light through. So I am I just need to play around with what type of tool or organza or whatever I should be using is. Um, if you know what I should be using to embroider on that's a sheer fabric like this, please drop it in the comments because I have no idea. Um, the internet is not very helpful when it comes to it. It does say that I should find a tool that has the smallest holes possible but like how do i search for that is that is that a measurement that i can look for i don't i don't know but 
Um, yeah, I, I think this looks pretty good. I need to play around more with the tension of my thread as well as obviously playing around with different materials that I am embroidering on, but I feel like I kind of got a hang of embroidering. Um, but yeah, let me show you up closer what this looks like. And of course, it's not a very sunny day outside, but I will try to show you this like this. But yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of kind of like puckering around where the stitching goes in, especially on the stitching that has the zigzag stitch. It really ended up like pulling the fabric and kind of making it kind of puckered and not lay flat anymore. Um, I was hoping that that would come out after I took the stabilizer off, but it kind of is still, you see, it's like ripply, but you know, you live and you learn. Like I said, I'm going to definitely experiment with different fabric choices and obviously I need to get to know my machine a little bit better because I definitely don't know... <laughs> the nuances between the different tensions and the different widths and lengths that I could be picking. But yeah, I definitely do think this turned out pretty nice. I think I like, maybe this white one the best. It just seems like very organic and kind of what I want in terms of my embroidering, but, um, I do kind of like how these turned out, but I wish they didn't pucker so much. It's definitely having a fun time, like making the inside part and then making that outline. But yeah, it doesn't really look very good. This one looks a little bit better, kind of smaller. But yeah, all in all, I, I think I'm happy with the results and I'm definitely excited to continue experimenting with this technique. And I'm not positive if I'm going to make something with this or if I'll just scrap it for something else, but um, I don't know. I think they look really pretty and I feel like I might even be able to cut them up if I want to and incorporate them into something else. Or maybe I should just keep going with this and kind of make it a scarf sort of situation. I don't know. That sounds easier than making it into a top or something else, but... I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like I spent a lot of time doing this and it didn't really turn into anything. But you have to remember that that's just sometimes how art is and I know that I will grow from this and I hope that it inspires you to maybe try something new even if you if you don't know if it's going to work out because exploration is the key to being creative. At least I think so. All right, everyone, I don't think I have anything else really to share with you for this week, but um, keep your eye out. I definitely have a couple new things that I'm going to be launching in my shop soon. And um, if you've joined me every week for these videos, I cannot even explain how much I appreciate you. If you made it this far and you aren't subscribed yet, please, please consider subscribing. It's totally free to you and it would mean the world to me. But yeah, I think that's all that I have to say. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you all next week. Bye everyone.